My name is Umesh Maheshwari, and I'm here to suggest that we move beyond block storage to add device level support for variable size pieces of data, which I call rocks. Now we all know about the block storage abstraction. It presents a sequence of fixed size blocks that can be read and written randomly. Some of you might also know that the SSD industry is moving to standardize a new abstraction called zoned namespaces, which divides the block address space into large zones and requires that each zone be written sequentially. This abstraction still uses fixed size blocks. So to avoid confusion, we could qualify the original abstraction as conventional block storage and the new abstraction as zoned block storage. Given this context, I believe that sequential writing presents a great opportunity to store variable sized pieces of data or rocks and that we should leverage this opportunity by extending zone storage to support rocks. Most of my talk is about why it makes sense to take this second step to extend zone storage this way. But first, let me expand on why it is useful to take the first step, which is to introduce zone storage, especially for flash-based devices. Suppose we want to implement a key value service. We could use a B tree or an LSM tree to translate keys to block addresses Either way, it requires a large-ish map and causes write amplification. And after the host has done this heavy translation, the SSD must do another heavy translation from block addresses to flash locations, which again requires a large-ish map and garbage collection. This is where zone storage could help, but it depends on whether we use a B tree or an LSM tree. In either case, the SSD can map a zoned block address to a flash location with only a light translation without a large map or GC. With a B tree, the heavy translation from the device must be pulled into the host in the form of a log structured file system or device mapper. But with an LSM tree, the key can be mapped directly to a zoned block address thus eliminating one of the two heavy translations for good. So assuming we want zoned storage, I believe we should extend it to support rocks because the downside is small and the upside is significant. I'll first talk about why the downside is small. One might think that rocks might complicate the specs but really the specs for zoned rock namespaces or ZRNS could be very similar to that for ZBNS as I've shown here. Only the addressing is slightly different. In ZBNS, a zone is identified using its starting LBA and the block address is the sum of the zone start LBA and the block number within the zone. In ZRNS, a zone can be identified using its starting offset in bytes, and the rock address is the sum of the zone start offset and the rock offset within the zone. Another option is to create the rock address as a tuple of the zone number and the rock offset, which has a somewhat cleaner semantics. One might think that rocks would add a lot of overhead in the SSD, but as far as I can see, the overhead would be small. First, let's consider how an SSD might implement a zoned block namespace. It can map a zone to one or more flash erase units, and this requires only a small per zone map, not a large per block map. The only challenge is that a block is typically four kilobytes, while the unit of programming NAND flash is a page, which is typically 16 kilobytes. 
So a single block cannot be written directly to Flash. Most SSDs address this challenge by staging writes in internal NVRAM. And for this, the SSD needs only a page size buffer for each active zone, which is a relatively small amount of NVRAM because zones are large and only some of them are active at a time. The same setup can work for staging rocks because NVRAM is byte addressable. Also, as with blocks, there's no need for a per rock map. In fact, the only per rock overhead is the metadata embedded inside each rock, which could be as small as a two byte length and a two byte CRC. This means the SSD could support rocks as small as say 16 bytes. And note that the host can always read or write a large sequence of rocks with a single command. So far, I've talked about how rocks would not add much cost in terms of either complexity or overhead. Next, I'll talk about how database and file systems can use rocks to store data more efficiently. There's a longer list in the paper. Here, I'll touch on only two of them. Some data, such as database pages, are quite compressible. So it's useful for the underlying file system to compress such data transparently. The challenge is that compression turns fixed size pages into variable size pages. Let's discuss two techniques used in current file systems on top of block storage. The first technique is to compress a cluster of pages and to store it in an integral number of blocks. The good news here is that the file system can continue to manage storage in units of blocks. For example, the unit of garbage is a block. The bad news is that if the application updates a page, the file system has to read, modify, write the whole cluster. So this is not good for random writes. The second technique can be seen as implementing a rocks-like abstraction on top of block storage. The file system does need to be a bit more sophisticated. For example, it now needs to collect garbage in units of rocks. But now, if the application updates a page, the file system can rewrite just that page. So these software level rocks or, or soft rocks can store data efficiently, but they are still not as good as device level rocks. Here I have shown device level rocks to the left. For soft rocks, the file system has to read an integral number of blocks. For example, to read page one, it has to read block zero and block one. With device level rocks, it can read just the desired rock. This would not matter much for spinning disks, but it can matter for SSDs by saving memory and IO bandwidth. Device level rocks have some other advantages which are covered in the paper. Let's move on to the second use case, which is logging. Zone storage might seem like a natural fit for logging, but one problem is that log records can be much smaller than a block, possibly by a factor of 100, and each record might still need to be persisted as it arrives. With block storage, the host can use one of these two techniques. The first is that it can rewrite the last block in the log, possibly 100 times. Actually, zoned storage doesn't allow any overwrites, and this requires an extension called ZRWA. Even with ZRWA, there can be at most one write pending to any given block because otherwise the device might reorder the writes and lose some records. The second technique is to stage the writes in the NVRAM. Note that the staging is explicitly directed by the host and is on top of any implicit staging within the SSD. So it adds some cost and complexity to the host. With device level rocks, which I have shown here to the left, 
the host can append log records directly to the SSD without staging them in NVRAM. In fact, multiple threads can append records concurrently without synchronization. And this can be particularly useful if the device is attached to the network and the threads are on different hosts. All of what I have presented is conceptual and it would be useful to implement and evaluate these concepts and to build on them further. For example, it would be useful to evaluate rock-based logging in the context of a real database system. Second, one could implement a device mapper that provides transparent compression to conventional applications. Third, one could extend ZRNS further to offload IO from LSM trees. If each KV record is stored as a rock and the device understands the KV format, the device can perform zone compaction while the host retains control over the merge policy. And this would support a variety of LSM designs. To conclude, I believe that zone storage has the potential to become the dominant abstraction on flash-based devices. I have uncovered an opportunity to extend zone storage to support variable size rocks, and I have theorized that this extension would add little cost in terms of either complexity in the specification or overhead in the implementation. I have argued that file and database systems can leverage device level rocks to store data more efficiently and also to append log records concurrently. Finally, I think we can extend zoned rock storage further to optimize domain specific functions such as merging in LSM trees. Thank you and I can take questions now.